There's a rule in Mariner's Law that whenever somebody's in trouble, you need to help them out. Where did the mask break? It broke at the foot. Oh, there's no, no mast at all anymore. Yeah, in that case, that's that's different. Damn it. We threw it in the sea. Pretty much every other vessel in the area is days and days away or heading away from them. This is their only means, uh, essentially, of a rescue um, in the near future at all. This is us. This is them. The U.S. Coast Guard informed me that you are hurt. Do you require medical attention? Sailing vessel Yara, this is break of dawn. Come in. Okay, so we've got a, uh, a pretty major problem. There's a rule in Mariner's uh, Law that whenever somebody's in trouble, you need to help them out. Like, you would want that same thing for you. So the Coast Guard tried to get a hold of us this morning around two o'clock in the morning. Unfortunately, our batteries had died, so we didn't have any way to get a hold of us. There was no internet or anything. Get this, we're about, I don't know, 2,000 miles from uh, the Hiva Oa where we left and about 2,400 or 2,200 from Panama. So we're almost exactly halfway. They're 60 miles from us right now and they have been dismasted. Who knows how, but um, you know, that happens. So it looks like we may get three French guys on board for the rest of the trip, which would make it very interesting. I don't know how luck they got so lucky, but um, that, that boat is only about 70 miles from us and um, we're re rerouting towards them, okay? Wow, that's awesome, John. I, I know they were asking me if you guys had extra rigging stuff on board. Yeah, I mean, if it's broken, then it's broken. There's nothing you can do. You can't sail with a broken mast. But I do have I do have lots of stuff to help repair, so we'll see what we can do. I imagine it's not fixable. Then they're gonna have to come on board with us and we'll take them to Panama and then they can go figure out how to get their boat later. Regardless, what we'll, we'll take all their wine. <laughs> Hi, Federal Officer Lewis, how are you, sir? Hey good, how are you guys doing? We're we're good. Uh, what type of vessel is your your boat? My vessel is a 48-foot oyster sailboat with five persons on board. I, I read on boatsearch.org or something like that that they're requesting 100 gallons of fuel. I know. And I don't think I can spare that. Um, we only we only carry about 150 gallons, and uh, we've used probably 30 of it. And I'm thinking we're going to need it for the end of the trip. Yeah, originally they just wanted some and uh, they were working what are they doing out here? on uh, fixing their mast, but the, well, not like the, the master hurt his leg pretty bad, so he's How close is the wanted to rest, so they uh, might be looking at uh, abandoning the boat. We haven't talked to Olivier yet, that's the captain of the boat, and I wrote him an email, so I said, Hello Olivier, this is James, I'm the captain of Break of Dawn, we are a 40-foot oyster with five persons aboard, James, Mario, Billy, John, Tom. We see you on AAS and we expect a rendezvous, a French word, with you <laughs> at or about 6 a.m. UTC. You gotta give time in UTC if you're doing these things, because who knows what time zone they're using right now. What is the current situation aboard? The U.S. Coast Guard informed me that you are hurt, do you require medical attention? Is your mobility impaired? I'm asking, you know, basically, I want to know if it's an emergency. We need to get him a hot helicopter, or if it's, uh, is he even going to be able to climb into the boat? Uh, what's your planned course of action? 
Where did the mast break? Uh, we have on board a roll of Dyneema, sail right sewing machine, extra sail material, and rear skirt pole. If your intention is to repair the boat and head downwind to the Marquesas, I'm fairly confident we can help you rig together a workable sail. If your intention is to abandon the boat, we can also assist. We are headed to Panama. Please prepare your belongings and food for transfer. If your intention is to take diesel, then I'm sorry to tell you that we don't have enough diesel on board to get you even close to any land. We're 1,200 miles from any land right now. If this option is your intention, I suggest you start the emergency SOS procedure because the container ship will not turn around unless you are in a state of emergency. Uh, towing is out of the question, I'm afraid. I would also like to know the status of your dinghy. Is it usable for per personnel transfer? Awaiting your reply, James Evenson. I think that succinctly gets all the information we need in the shortest amount of time. All right, we received an email from Olivier. Olivier is the captain of the boat. And he said that there's three people on board. Uh, yeah, they're patiently waiting our arrival. So the way I see it, they have, they only have three options really. Um, do they want to fix the boat or, you know, like jerry rig it? We can give them our whisker pole and we can lash it to the front of their mast. And before we put it up there, we, we rig it with a bunch of Dyneema that I have. I have a whole roll of Dyneema. And then we hoist it up and then and then test it out and then bring it back down and make a sail for that and then i can sew it with my sail right machine and they'd be fine we could have it, it, instead of having a really tall you know thin sail it would be really long and short and um i think that's a very viable option in fact if it was my boat that's what i would do um rather than rather than get off of it and the other option they have is I, is coming with us. And the other option, the third option they have is waiting for another rescue vehicle that would have enough fuel. But honestly, it's 2,500 miles from here to Hawaii and it's 1,200 miles from here to um, Mexico. But there's a tropical storm in the way too. So who knows how long that'd take. What I'm thinking is they need about 250 gallons to be safe. Where are they gonna put it? What are they gonna put it in? and you just can't do it it's, it's the worst worst spot in the world to lose your mast so the only real two, really two options are what how they feel should they come with us or should they fix their boat these two options are causing a, a little bit of contention with my crew actually because tom thinks it's very irresponsible to let them do that right yes you... i'm i'm all for taking them on board what about what about tom i think that's a safe option what do you think about the jury rigging the boat option I think that that's a recipe for potential disaster and you only go out when you have safety things in effect that will get you there reliably and that's not reliable. John, what's your take? I think that they should abandon the vessel and hopefully the, hopefully the Coast Guard says they can leave it floating and come and salvage it and they should come with us because apparently someone's hurt there, right? That's the last word we have. We don't know the extent of the injury, but uh, if there were three healthy people, maybe I'd feel differently about letting them go. I think it's uh, pretty much up to them what they want to do. Um, we don't know how badly the captain's hurt, so uh, that could certainly play into it, but um, I think either of the options are good. They said, hi James, our answer is in the mail below, thank you. What is the current situation on board? The captain has a painful leg, a wound with oedema, and can at the moment hardly stand on his foot. It seems better after a few hours lying in his bed. We are all three pretty tired and need rest. No med medical attention is needed for the moment. What is your planned course of action? We are still hesitating between two options. One, abandoning the vessel because we already tried to pull up the boom as a mast but top heavy with the swell so it failed again 
we should have tried the Tangon pole of the spinnaker is the whisker pole you're talking about but we're tired and wounded two trying again with your help and energy to see if this is possible to head on to panama or marquesas where did the mast break it broke at the foot oh, there's no, no mast at all anymore yeah in that case that's that's different damn it we threw it in the sea that's a problem. If it is your intention to take diesel, no, it is fine. We understand that is not possible with you. Towing is out of the question, of course. I would also like to know what's the set of your dinghy. Uh, yes, our dinghy is usable, sweet. We suggest to contact each other by VHF when you arrive in the area, but meet tomorrow morning, preferably because we need a good night of rest. It is okay for you, perfect. Yeah, exactly, guys. Nicely done. So how far away are we? Uh, 17 miles. So it sounds like they want to abandon ship. Do we just heave to? They're going to have to abandon ship. I thought there was some mast. I mean, if there was a, a base of mast, that's different. I could, we could put the spinnaker pole, make it taller. But with a spinnaker pole, it's 16 feet long. How, like, how fast do you think we're going to go? Plus, getting the thing up is going to be, like they said, uh, it's going to be, unless there's maybe six of us and we have one person on each line and then we, we raise it up and put it through blocks. I mean, Jesus, that's they're they're well, probably like they say they want to sleep and and they they don't want to speak until first light. So why don't yeah. we heave to? No, no, we're gonna go to them and get closer to them. We don't want to be too close. Yes, we're gonna heave to and not do anything and not watch, right? Well, I thought we were just gonna bob because uh, we we don't want to move too far. Um, well, we're, it's, we're the seas aren't too to. bad. We can bob. No, no, no. Bobbing is gonna be way more uncomfortable. You guys aren't gonna sleep at all. It's going to be like a 50 degree roll every once in a while from a big And wave. we need to still have a watch because if we come too close to them, we need to come out of it. No, what we need to do is listen to me. I'm the captain, not okay. you guys, okay? Hi, okay. Right, captain. This is us. This is them. Since we have our sails up, we're traveling at 2.4 knots this way, about 064. They're traveling at 1.2 knots at 030. So they're going to go up this way, and we're going to go over this way. And at a certain point, we're going to cross. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to find where we're going to cross. It's kind of involved. What we do is we start a track. Well, I did that already. Our track says we're going 2.4 knots for the last eight minutes. OK, so we're going to see which direction we're going to go on that track. I know it's a little blurry, I'm sorry. So we're going about 072, and then we're going to measure out from 072, from, from the boat, 072, 2.5, right? So we're going to be five miles in two hours. We're going to be right here, 072. Okay, so now we're going to put this thing right on that right on that dot all right and then we're going to go to our marker because i already marked where they are and we're going to measure out two hours at zero this is 30.5 degrees at 1.2 knots so we're going to measure out 2.4 2.4 they're going to be right there so we are going to be up here they're going to be right there and actually, we're not gonna be anywhere near each other. We're, we're probably gonna be at least a mile, a good mile away. They, they say that they are in between abandoning the vessel or trying to, uh, trying to repair it, but I really don't see a way without any mass there that they can do that. So it looks like, it, to me, I think they're gonna get on board with us. The vessel has expressed that they, they want to stay with their vessel if at all possible. Um, with your track line heading that direction, um, and pretty much every other vessel in the area is days and days away or heading away from them. This is their only means, uh, essentially, of a rescue um, in the near future at all. Okay. Um, I'll explain that to so you. So that, that we have, you know, expressed that to them. We have told them that we have, we are trying to reach out to the tankers in the area as well. Um, but we have not received any sort of confirm 
information or, or response from these other vessels um, offering to offer any sort of assistance as you have. Fortunately, okay. in this case, I happened to be on watch when when we had a uh, when you had a flare sighting earlier this month. Uh. So I happen to be very familiar with your vessel. <laughs> like I know who to contact. So that was um, very fortunate. And in this case, and and you being in the area. Um, wow, how fortunate with that was that? Sailing vessel Yara, sailing vessel Yara, sailing vessel Yara, this is break of dawn, come in. Yara to break of dawn, Yara to break of dawn, Yara to break of dawn. I can hear you very clearly now, are you guys okay right now? Yeah, you, we can see uh, you uh, too, yeah. Okay, you're just so tell them, look, we are going to heave to okay. and wait until the light, okay. and then we'll come up to you guys, and okay. we'll talk about whether... Okay, I got we'll, it. We'll talk about it then. Okay. Um, Yara, uh, we are going to heave to this evening nearby, okay, and you should be able to see our light, and what we plan on doing is coming to you in the morning. Okay, perfect, okay. Ask them if they have the dinghy in the water. Do you currently have your dinghy in the water? Yes. Okay. Um, we'll be standing by on channel 16. If anything develops, please radio us. Okay. We stay with this. Okay. Have a good night. Out. We've, we've got a visual on them. Um, they're about two miles away and... Um, I just saw them about uh, less than a minute ago for the first time. So they do have their lights on. They're off of our port side. Um, so that's a good thing. So now what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass them and then we're gonna turn our engine off so we know that we're not gonna hit them. Yep. I know you guys can't see it, but it, it, it's out there. That's good, we saw them. That's good to see visual on them. They're right there. Can you see them still? A little bit. Every now and then I, I just see a little flicker. Maybe if I turn this off. Did you call AAA? I'm glad you guys are okay. All right, we got them back. <laughs> well, they're happy. And... <laughs> Six f***ing days? Yes. I thought it was one day. I know. Oh my god, you guys. It was which way? <laughs> Welcome, man. Oh. All right, you made it. <laughs>